Hello everybody, we'll get started here in just about one more minute, promptly at 5, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Hope everyone has had a wonderful Saturday. And we'll get started here just momentarily. Okay. Hoo-wee. It's a beautiful sunny day here in North Central Illinois. Hey, puppy. Hey, Bobo. Good boy. And so this is, let's see, I believe this is number five, episode five <clears throat> of our Quotes in Italy series, The Lacey Log Cabin. This is what we are piecing right here. <laughs> this is what we're piecing right here. And guess what? I've only got 12, uh, 16 more blocks to do. And that's what I'm getting started on tonight. And then tomorrow, beginning at noon, 12 noon Central Standard Time, we will actually set all 64 blocks together in this quilt top will be complete and finished. So where we are at on this diagram here, <clears throat> we are on this bottom row of blocks. There's 16 different blocks, piecing four blocks of each one, which makes a total of 64 blocks. So they'll be set together eight blocks wide and eight blocks long. And my quilt will measure, let's see, it will measure approximately, let me do a quick measurement here. And it'll be about 90 by 90, I think. We'll measure it tomorrow and we'll give you a final answer on that. Because this is the third quilt top I've made in the Quilts by Italy series. This is a K-Facet book. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I'm going to do, I have there's 20 different quilt tops in this book. This is quilt top number three I have made live here on my YouTube channel out of this book. And <clears throat> there's at least one or two more I'm going to make out of this, and then we'll move on to probably another book. But this is what I'm currently making, Lacey Log Cabin. Oops, there we go. And I did not use K fabric in mine. I substituted fabric I had in my stash. And, and it's, it's okay to do that. If you have the K or you have a, a, a good supplier of K, well then by all means, buy the K. <laughs> but I wanted to use some of the fabric in my stash. So hence, when you see my blocks, here is my stack of blocks. There are 48 quilt blocks in the stash. And this was quilt block number one. So I have four, four of each of these blocks. So I'm gonna hold up, I have four of each. There's block number one. Let's see here. Here's block number two. Okay. Here's block group number three. I'm keeping them in order because tomorrow when I go to set these all together, I want to know which group is which. It'll make me make me do my layout easier. But that's group number three. Here is group number four. Group number four. Group number five. Okay. Group number six. Hi, Tracy. Group number six. Okay. Group number seven. <laughs> Let's see here. There we go. Group number seven right here. And each one of these I'm holding up, there are four exactly alike. That's number seven. Here is number eight. 
right here. This is number nine, group block of groups number nine. <coughs> Excuse me. Number nine. This is number 10, right there. And believe it or not, I've used about 20 different fabrics the way that I did it. That was nine, this is 10. Okay, here's number 11. Actually, that was number 12. I got miscounted there. This was block group number 12 right here. I'm going to swap my camera. <clears throat> and right here. So here's, here's the rest of my pieces. 13. Oops, let me back that up just a little bit. There we go. 13, 14, 15, and 16. There's all my centers. This is what we're piecing on today. And we're going to get started, everybody. We'll see how long I can hold out. If I can't finish these all on camera, I'm going to finish them after I log off and before we get started tomorrow. But I'm going to give it my best college try to get all 16 of these blocks done while we're filming tonight. Okay. So, all of that being said, let me get a sip of my coffee. And we're going to get started here. I'm going to chain piece all 16 blocks <clears throat> is how I'm going to do this. And it'll be a good thing. Okay, so. As long as I don't, don't try to get mixed up, everything will work out perfectly with all these strips. Okay. So this is the beginning of group number 13. And I have, oops, don't want that stitch. I have my stitch length set to two millimeters. And I'm just using a quarter inch seam allowance. On my first round of strips on these blocks, I'm going to take my time because once I get this first set stitched on, the rest is easier. It just seems easier to do. Okay. Now we're moving right along. Feel free to leave a comment. Please, if you're watching, like the video. Because whenever you like a video after it's done filming, this will be recorded so you can rewatch it if you want to. And that will just make it turn up higher in a search window for folks that are searching for something like this. It's a good thing. And I appreciate it very much. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to move to 14 and do those four strips. And we're just going to keep on keeping on here, everybody. Let's see. Here we go. Of course, you want to put right sides together. Excuse me. Come on. Yes, the last sixteen blocks. I'm so excited. Of course, I really got delayed finishing this because. In the process of piecing this quilt top, I've been through eye surgery. 
I go in Monday for my first follow-up visit. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> I like to do every single piece I run through as when I'm chain piecing, so they're exactly alike. <clears throat> it's just easier to spot a boo-boo if you make a boo-boo if you strive to do that. And that's what I do strive to do. Okay. Next, next week I will be in Austin, Texas. <clears throat> I'll be visiting a quilt shop there. They also sell baby lock sewing machines. And we're gonna have some, some digitizing fun at the shop in Texas, in Austin, Texas. The baby lock retailer there. So my Friday Night Live next week will be from Austin, Texas. This is from group 16, that was 15. Here's group 16. Hooey. me. I tell you everybody, my fall hay fever has kicked in big time and I don't have a, much of a cough but I am using cough drops to help keep <clears throat> my throat clear so that I can talk. <laughs> so if you're wondering why my voice sounds a little raspy, that is the reason why. <clears throat> okay, so there's our first set of pieces. The, in each stack there are, let's see, 16 groups. So that was the first first group across all, all of the blocks for that. I'm gonna use my handy dandy, handy dandy little tool here and just snip these out and I'm gonna take my time and stack them nice and neat. There we go. I'm also gonna stack them in order that I sewed them down and that way as I go to add the next strip around it'll just work, work from 13 to 16 nice and even all the way across without really having to think about it. There we go. Okay. And now 
Need four from this stack first. From block, this is uh, group number 13. Hi, Jenny. Oh, thank you, Jenny. I think it'll be I think it'll be rather lovely as well. And it's it's not scraps, but it has that scrappy look because I use so many different fabrics in it. And it that's okay. It's a good thing. Not all of my quilts are scrappy looking. Even though they look scrappy, sometimes I really plan them. <laughs> I put a lot of thought into it for fabric placement when I'm sewing it all together. from the stack four pieces here we go Whew. Yes, this quilt top will be completely finished tomorrow at the end of tomorrow's episode. Because this is the last 16 blocks I have to make. Tomorrow will be all about sewing all the blocks together to make our finished quilt top. <clears throat> One time when I made <clears throat> a log cabin quilt, I ran all 60, I chain pieced all 64 blocks like I'm doing here. And I can just tell you, I did, only did that once because it seemed like it took forever to get all the blocks done. So I just find it better to break it up into maybe four, four groups or four sessions because just get a, a sense of accomplishment when you finish 16 blocks. And that's traditionally a log cabin quilt has 64 blocks and you set them eight wide and eight long. Now you can make it any size you want as far as you can make it eight blocks by 10 blocks, nine blocks by nine blocks, 10 by 10 whatever but i'm just saying if you break it up if you're going to chain piece it don't try to chain piece all the blocks at one time it'll really get tedious break it break the blocks up into smaller groups and then you get that sense of accomplishment because you can you can just get them, <clears throat> you have little stepping stones or milestones of completion. Now. And then four from this stack. Two, 
right there. We're almost got <clears throat> two rounds out of 16 complete, which would actually be one eighth. One eighth of these entire 16 blocks we're working on completed. One eighth of the way. Okay. Oops, now I see what's going on there. Hold on here. Picked up both of my centers. So let me do a quick little scene rip here. There we go. I did a boo boo. I did do a boo 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 boo. Let's see here. That's correct. Nope. Oh, that's good. Okay. I hadn't sewn through all the layers, thank goodness, so I didn't have to rip anything out. Part again. And that gypsy cutter, I mean, it is if you like to chain piece, this little purple gizmo I'm using right here. This is something you definitely need. It's made by the Gypsy Quilter. Ooh, they make a whole lot of different little gadgets, but there's razor blades inside of these screws to, just to cut the thread apart from all this chain piecing. It's the only thing it does, and it's very well designed for that. Here we go. All righty. So next, this will be round th group three. Will be not group really. This will be our third set of pieces out of sixteen. Let's see here. Go right there like that. Let me back this up a little bit. Here we go see a little better then. There we go. Okay. You know, it's actually round one for block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16. This is round one of block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16.
I've finally seen reports and Facebook postings of people I know down in Florida, and so far everything is good. I mean, it's going to take a while everyone for everyone to get electricity and water and sewage and <coughs> reliable cell towers to back up. It will take some time for that infrastructure to get repaired. That's for sure. <clears throat> Hearts go out to all of those affected by this Hurricane Ian. I tell you, once you've been through one, you all, whenever there's one, some just affect you more than others, but I know this one really affected me emotionally, it brought back a lot of memories. From the hurricane I went through. <clears throat> You know, surviving the storm is difficult as far as when it's act the storm's actually going on. But I tell you, for me, the aftermath was worse than the storm itself. It was just a nightmare to have to deal with all the stuff you have to deal with, <clears throat> with the cleanup and the rebuilding and everything. Hi, Becky. Oh, thank you, Becky. I'm not always so organized, Becky. It looks good on camera, but I do try. <laughs> My greatest fear that this would get knocked off, all these stacks of strips, and then I would probably just not even want to finish it <laughs> to try to get them back in order. That's why my little dog is not allowed on top of my sewing table. <laughs> He can be down at my feet all he wants, but he does not get close to stacks of, of cut pieces like that. And what you didn't see, I did have these all want each stack wonder clip together. I have some really large wonder clips. These right here, you can see how much larger than a normal wonder clip this is. There's a regular wonder clip and there's my large ones. And that's what I use once I make a stack to keep a stack clipped together. There we go. Right there like that. That helps. Okay. Woohoo. Gonna keep on keeping on. We are working on round one of block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16. And that is a total of 16 blocks we are currently piecing using the chain piecing method. And the pattern for this quilt is out of a book. <clears throat> It's a K facet book called Quilts in Italy. There it is. And this is the quilt that we're making right here. This is on page 62 out of the book. Okay. pieces from that's number stack blocks group 16 15 14 and 13 and we're working on round one and 
what's so important <clears throat> for any quilt block is a consistent seam, quarter inch seam. And especially for a log cabin, because it's a, there's a lot of seams in one block. For instance, <clears throat> check out all the back of this block and look at all those seams that are in that one block. You have to be consistent or it'll throw the entire finished size of the block off. If each seam was just off an eighth of an inch, that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would throw it off two inches. If each seam was just one eighth of an inch off, it would throw your finished block size off by two inches. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Get all those cut apart. See, here's why it's called chain piecing. They're all attached, just like in the chain. Okay. For those of you that have never done the chain piecing, if you have a lot of pieces to sew together, this will greatly speed the whole process along and it will you will save a lot of thread by chain piecing okay because you're not wasting thread between each each piece of fabric if you're going to have to trim it and cut it and all that fun stuff there we go okay now, once I get this next group of strips sewn on, <clears throat> this these blocks will be 25% completed. Woohoo! Pretty cool. Very cool. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, hi, Mark. My favorite quarter inch foot. Boy, that's a hard question. But I can tell you, I have a couple. The one I'm using tonight is not the one that came with the machine. This is just a quarter inch piecing foot, okay, without the metal guide on the side. I have one of these with the metal guide also. I can't find it. I personally prefer the one with the metal guide, but this one works equally as well. And there's marks on this foot to do either a quarter or an eighth of an inch seam. I really like this one. Okay. Jenny, I do have the kind of the fabric picked out. I'll be ordering um, bolts tomorrow for that. <clears throat> and I'll be able to post pictures of it when I get back from Austin, Texas next weekend. I will be in Austin, Texas next Friday and Saturday, and my next live after I get home will be on the following Monday. So a week from Monday. Now I will be doing my Friday night live from, from Austin next Friday night. But my quilts in Italy will not be done until I'll do, I will show the fabric and all that stuff on my next quilt in Italy's episode. I have found some really cool fabric for that quilt, though. Jenny. 
It's in the same colorway, <clears throat> cream and the beautiful blue. I just have to place my order for the, the fabric bolts. It'll be delivered towards the end of next week, I think. Should ship out on either Monday or Tuesday. This book that we're currently piecing out of, there are some of the fabrics in that book that are really difficult to find. So once I do one or two more quilts out of this current book, I am going to purchase a more recent CAFE book, and it should make it easier to find some of those patterns, some of those fabrics for those who want to make it exactly like the picture in the book. I'm not, I don't have to personally, I like playing with other fabrics and stuff, but it's totally cool whichever way you want to do it, if you want to sew along with me. Ooh wee. Oh, and, and what I'm gonna start doing in the future also, I will have fabric um, available for purchase if you want to use the same fabric that I am during uh, these videos and sew along with me. That's what I'm working on right now. Just being able to make that happen. I don't know if if who was watching if anyone was watching last night, <clears throat> but I knew I was going to be leaving this next Wednesday for my drive to Austin, Texas, and. I decided to get my flu shot this last Monday. And I then I decided, well, I may as well go ahead and get my new COVID booster as well, and just get it all done at one time. And then I decided, well, I'll just get them both in the same arm. It won't be no big deal, right? All I can say is everyone don't ever do that. If you're going to get both your flu shot and your COVID booster, have them do one. Don't do them in the same arm. No, it was not a pleasant experience. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Feeling much better now, but don't get two vaccines in the same arm. Don't get a COVID and a flu vaccine in the same arm at the same time. Learned that one the hard way. Yes, Jenny, do not get them both in the same arm if you get them at the same time. I'll never make that mistake again. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Ooh -wee. But 
it's over with now. I survived. I'm well inoculated for the next, for my travel I've got to do here over the next month and a half. <clears throat> so it's all good. It's all good. we go there is round one round number one for block groups 13 14 15 and 16 complete and that means 25% of these pieces have now been attached to my last group of blocks yay that's so exciting truly it is also, what I will have done before I go on camera tomorrow, I'm going to lightly press all of my blocks. And <clears throat> I think I'm going to lightly press all of my blocks before I set them all together. We'll see. And when I do that, I will put my blocks face up on my ironing board and just gently press them out from the center. That is how I will do that. Okay. Yabba dabba do. There we go. So now, onward. Get a sip of my coffee here. So, four pieces off of this stack. It's group 13, block group 13. They'll go on this one right here. Block group number 13 right here. Beginning on round two. Two here, everybody. Yes, and <clears throat> we just got a new mattress, heated mattress pad in. It was just delivered today. I'm going to give that puppy a try tonight. Break it in. Tell you the energy bills have really gone up. <clears throat> I know our electric bill, they doubled our rate at the beginning 
in June or July. And boy, howdy, has it made a difference on our monthly energy bill. So we are starting to take measures now, prepping for what's probably not going to be. I expect gas prices, natural gas prices, to be horrible this winter for heat. They were already bad last winter. Okay, and then four from here. And we do month average billing each month, and boy, howdy. It's ridiculous. used to be really bad about leaving lights on in the room. No, I don't, not that, no, I make sure I've turned off everything that's not being used. No. Especially here in the studio, I make sure these bright studio lights are off, unless I have my camera on. <clears throat> from this stack. going to be picking up another machine <clears throat> a nice travel machine to, to piece on so when I am out at a hotel I can actually continue to do some of my lives at night while I'm traveling my sewing videos so. want to be able to take a small machine with me because it's a great way to pass the nights when you're out out visiting other shops around the country let's see here and for these did I just do for these here it's next okay For these, okay. No, before COVID, I always got a flu shot. <clears throat> One year I did, the one year I did not get it, I got the flu and I was sicker than a dog for three weeks. So I'll never make that mistake again. <laughs> but I, 
I've always made sure I get a flu shot every time. be five 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 sets of pieces out of 16 for these blocks let's see here but we are currently working on round two of block groups 13 14 15 and 16 and we got the first set of pieces for round number two just attached. Well, Tracy, I am thinking about the new uh, Baby Lock Aurora. It's the smallest sewing embroidery machine combo. And that's what I'm thinking of because I did have the Sophia um, two generations ago it was called the Sophia 2 and that machine you can actually carry on on an airplane it will actually fit in a little piece of luggage that you can put under the seat or in the overhead compartment for traveling it would be the perfect machine for that that's my travel machine I am not going to travel with a big machine. I just will not do that. <laughs> you know, as I always think, okay, what machine can I fit, can I use as a carry-on if I go on an airplane? That's what I think of when I do a travel machine. Totally different if you're in a vehicle, but if you're flying somewhere, there's not that many machines out there that can handle that. <clears throat> And I can tell you from past experience, if you're flying, never check in a sewing machine and checked in luggage. It, you will get it back in pieces. Yes, it is a cool, a cool little new, it's their new little machine. Tracy and it actually has wireless connectivity so you can transfer files from your computer to the machine without using a USB stick. Pretty cool. And for piecing or making embroidery quilt labels, it's a perfect machine to do that. To do that. I really like the new Bloom also. It's just a little bit larger than what I'm comfortable, would be comfortable taking on an airplane. The Aurora replaced the Verve. It was just released here just this last August. And four from this group, right? Yes. 
four strips from that group. I know what you meant, Tracy. <laughs> I know what you meant. It's all good. This little group here is next. Two, four. Just peace and ride along. You know the <clears throat> the Aurora it has a maximum embroidery hoop. It's just a four by four inch hoop, but you know what? There's actually quite a lot you can do with a four by four inch hoop if you really and honestly think about it. Quilt label. There's a lot of really cool embroidery designs of that size. And most patches, if you like to make patches, it's the perfect size hoop to make patches with. So there's a lot you can do with that machine. Quilting in the hoop? No. You, pro you could, but I don't think you'd want to... <laughs> no, that wouldn't be... You could do it, but it wouldn't be a fun thing to do quilting in the hoop with a four by four inch hoop. That's for sure. <sighs> That's really a cool little machine. Sometimes I have insomnia, <clears throat> and especially when I'm away from my familiar surroundings in a hotel, 
it really helps me to be able to take my mind off of things and finally fall asleep by having a traveling with the sewing machine. So that's what I like to do. I remember I went through an airport one time with a sewing machine in my carry-on and they x-rayed it. And it was so funny. The ladies, the lady that x-rayed, she looked at it and said, what is that? I said, oh, that's my sewing machine so I can piece on my quilt tops while I'm in my hotel at night. And she just got the biggest kick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really funny. Good times. Good times. Okay, so we can cut these, get these all cut apart. Then we'll move on to the third group of pieces for round two. The third group of pieces for round two is next. Okay. I heard you grunt puffing. You're on your little couch over there, aren't you? Hmm? Puffin's my little, he likes to, when I take my nap, he'll lay down and watch Netflix with me. <clears throat> okay. Coffee time. <laughs> Hi Molly, how are you today? Oh, I agree with you, Tracy. So Molly, the next quilt we'll be doing is on page 58. And it's this, oops, here we go, wrong camera. This is this blue and white quilt. Now I'm ordering fab bolts of fabric for this. So a week from Monday will be my next uh, live for the Quilts in Italy series. And I will showcase the fabric I've ordered for this in case anybody would just like to order fabric from me. Totally up to y'all how you do that. You don't have to do that, of course, but I will have it available if anybody would like to make a quilt top using the exact same fabric that I am. Okay. But the next quilt is called Blue and White, and that is on page 58 of the Quilts in Italy book. This is the next one right here. Okay, okay. so four pieces from this stack. Bobbin will be running out shortly. I don't think it'll make it through this next stack of stack, this next stack here without me having to change the bobbin. But this is a time when I'm piecing that I like to use up partially wound bobbins that I've had left over from other projects. It's all good. I don't like to waste anything, so I will just go through my bobbins as I need one, and one that's less than half full or whatever. I will just start using up leftover bobbin thread from other projects to piece with. It's a great way to get your bobbins empty. Especially if I know I'm not going to be using that bobbin thread for another project. 
where I would need it, and that's how I'll use it up. But my next live show will actually be tomorrow. <clears throat> So this is my last group of blocks for this quilt top. And I'm going to set them all together tomorrow and finish the quilt top tomorrow. It starts at 12 noon. I will just be getting all my, my blocks set together. Okay, then this group. We are on round two of our last 16 blocks for our Lacey Log Cabin. Just moving right along here, everybody. Getting these blocks done. Yes, Molly, I will still be doing that one in the future as well. Losing the marbles will be a December project because here in the month of October, I will be traveling every week somewhere. <clears throat> and I want to be able to dedicate some quality video time for that one. However, I will be continuing the blue and white quilt. That will be our, our October quilt. And I'll be doing most of that one from my hotel rooms while I'm out traveling. In October, I will be going next week to Austin, Texas, the following week to Green Bay, Wisconsin, the following week to Cleveland, Ohio, and let's see, then the following week to Naples, Florida. That'll get me to the end of October. And that Losing the Marbles quilt <clears throat> on page 115, I'll be showing more than one way to do that. Specifically, how to applique those circles down. So one method will be using, doing it applique in the hoop. Another method will be to use the circular attachment. Yes, you heard me right, the circular attachment. <sighs> and then another method will just be to use a sewing machine and a decorative stitch to stitch it down. So, which 
basically would translate to a non hoop um, a non applique in the hoop method so I'll have three different methods on how to, to assemble those, those blocks, how to make those little blocks. That is one that would be a really great one. You could make it with Definitely is a scrappy looking quilt. <clears throat> so what we're talking about, everybody, is this right here. Let's see. This is going right here. This is going to be our December quilt that we'll be working on in December right here. So this will be the October quilt. This will be December quilt, and I'll come up with another one for November. So there's three more quilt tops to make before the end of the year. Okay. All righty. Now then, let's see here. Where are we at? We're right here. Woohoo. A great way to make that marble quilt is through charm squares or layer cakes and that will give you a lot of a lot of different fabrics if you're wanting to use the K for another designer's fabric lines in it but that'd be a good way to get a good mix of fabric instead of buying nothing but yardage or fat quarters you can also buy fat quarters but I haven't read the cutting instructions for the, the, the losing my marbles quilt. I might change the size of my pieces a little bit. We'll see. Let me just have a look at that real quick right now while it's on my mind. <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's see here. So this quilt consists of 289 squares, each three and a half inches finished, which would mean a four inch cut. A four inch square would equal that. And then there's 115 circles that are appliqued randomly on those squares. So, and what's the finished size of this? 59 by 59. So, I can tell you right now, I already know how I'm going to modify this a little bit to make it easier to cut. I'm going to cut it <clears throat> using 5 inch squares, which is a charm square. Okay? So if you buy charm packs, and you'd need more, of course you would need about, let's see here. I will go on the math further on as we get closer to that. It's not time to talk about that yet. Let me get my brain off of that or I'm, because I want to focus on what I'm doing here right now. But yes, there, there is a multiple ways to do that. And actually, I might just make it the size that it is in the book, but it would be definitely be easier. The only thing is <clears throat> to get all those squares, you're gonna have to buy some, at least buy fat quarters if you're gonna cut those squares out of fat quarters to be able to get enough to make the size of quilt that you want. Okay, so that is, that one is done. Let's get those cut apart. Let's get those cut apart. So now I'm doing math in my head for the marble, the December quilt. Five, let's see here. <laughs> 
it's how my brain works. Once I get a number in it, it'll drive me crazy unless I finish it out. So if you made them out of five inch squares, and we did 60. Five will go into 60 how many times? One. 15. So 15 squares by 15 squares would be, let me get my calculator here. Hold on, everybody. Let's see here. Um, let me get a calculator. There we go. So 15 times 15, 225 divided by 42. That would take 5.6 packs of char five inch charm squares to make that quilt top. But that's not counting the circles either. So something to think about with that. <clears throat> I think I actually would probably be better just to use, use yardage. Anyway, back to this right here. Now we got these cuts. So now we're going to go, we are doing round two of block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16. And this is our last set of strips. Yes. Yes, our last set of strips for this round. There we go. Okay. And then round two will be complete once we get this next group, this next layer sewn down. There is a lot of piecing in the log cabin, this log cabin quilt. <clears throat> there are let's see, 16, 17 pieces of fabric in each block, which means 17 times 64. Oops, calculator. Come on, you. I'm going to tell you how many actual pieces are going to be in this quilt top here. Let's see, 17. Come on. Come on. There you go. 17 times 64 equals. 1,088 pieces of fabric in this quilt top that we're making right now. It's a lot of pieces. 1,088 pieces to be exact. And right there we go. Now I can actually put in a new bobbin. <laughs> Finally. Let me cut that one. Okay. Pull that 
that little dab out. There's another partial bobbin. And it might be a fourth of a bobbin there. Just put that one in and get it used up. Okay, now we're good to keep on going. Let's go ahead and attach that so they stay connected in order. <clears throat> then tomorrow's the, the fun time finishing the cool top. Oh my goodness. Also everybody, in December I am going to quilt one of the quilt tops I've made during this Quilts in Italy series. Someone asked me if I was going to sell these quilt tops and I hadn't really planned on it. <laughs> But you never know. I might just put some of these cool tops on my website also. I don't know yet. We'll see. Moving right along here, this is the next one for those. Well, everybody, it is mushroom season here in the part of Illinois that I live in. Mike's been out a couple of times and has brought home mushrooms to make wonderful omelets, mushroom and cheese omelets. <clears throat> So far he has found, let's see, chicken of the wood mushrooms, lion's mane, oyster mushrooms, and the oyster mushrooms is what I make in my, for omelets. I saute them in butter. <clears throat> finish making the omelet using that. There we go. Okay, we're almost halfway done with these six, last 16 blocks. This last four pieces will put us there.
do do here we go almost at the halfway point for the last 16 blocks here This will make them halfway done, this strip of fabric right here in my hand. <clears throat> and there we go. All right. Those are halfway complete. Woohoo. Working on blocks, uh, block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16, four blocks from four blocks exactly of like of out of each one of those four different groups. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Get me a drink of coffee here. I'm gonna go make some more coffee here in a minute. <clears throat> Alrighty. And we're gonna start with the next set of strips. Four of those. piece of fabric. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. All righty. And then four from this group. Okay, that's actually for group 14. <clears throat>
Alrighty, now the group 15. Here we go. Group 15. We are in round three. <clears throat> round three of block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16. last piece for group 15 for round one round three again. okay and four from this group here If you haven't done so yet, please click on that like button. That actually helps my videos place higher in, a ser in um, search results. groups 13, 14, 15, 16. that a piece that I'm doing is called chain piecing. I'm working on all 16 blocks at the same time. If you've got all of your pieces pre-cut, it's a wonderful way to save a lot of time and make your piecing go a lot faster by doing chain piecing. Now I'm going to take four strips from each off of each set here, off of each group, as I get to them. So we're going to do number th group 13 first. Let's see, there we go. 
There's four right there. from group 14. Just moving right along here, we are on round three <clears throat> of block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16. Working on our last 16 blocks for this quilt top, Glacy Log Cabin, on page 62 of the book Quilts and Italy. Okay, facet. Okay, now four from this stack. Two, three, four. Everybody, I'm going to be on here until I get these blocks completely pieced. That is my goal for tonight. Tomorrow at 12 noon Central Standard Time, we will start setting all of our blocks together. And finish this quilt top on tomorrow's episode, which would be episode 6. This is episode five tonight. Thank you.
four from this one and we'll have that set of strips complete. Hoo-hoo, working on round number three still. Just getting it done. This is really a pretty fabric right here. This is this is some Hoffman fabric. It has some little silver metallic streaks in it. But it's really a pretty fabric as well. always exciting when you see the light at the end of the tunnel on because there's a lot of peace and there's only 64 blocks in this quilt top <clears throat> but there's over a thousand pieces of fabric to sew together to get there one thousand eighty eight to be exact and put in another bobbin Everyone, the reason I am changing my bobbin so often is that I'm actually using up, I'm emptying out some of my bobbins that I didn't have much thread on. And that's just what I like to do when I'm piecing. It's a great way just to use up some thread that you'd otherwise just throw away. Okay. Okay, there we go. Right there, I mean, just go ahead and tack this down right there. Just want to keep them in order. That way they don't get messed up or anything. I just don't want to get one out of order because then it'll throw my, my whole deal off. He'll throw it all off. I don't want that. I do try to stay very organized when I am chain piecing because it just makes for a much smoother experience <clears throat> when you can do so. Okay. In each one of my block groups there's 16 different groups of blocks and you make four four blocks out of each group so all groups 1 through 16 each have four identical blocks in each group and 4 times 16 is 64 which is how many blocks there are in this quilt top they will be set together eight blocks wide by eight blocks long so tomorrow I will be piecing rows of blocks, eight blocks in each row, and then I will set the rows together. That's how I'm going to achieve that. Okay. A four from this group. Right there.
three, round three of block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16. Next is four out of this group here, for group 14. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay. Group 14 is what this comes from. Right there, group 14. Fortino. four from group 15. We are still working on round three of blocks, block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16 using the chain piecing method. My stitch length is set at two millimeters.
Yes, more bobbin. Another bobbin change. Let's see. Here we go. More bobbin thread. Now we're ready to rock and roll. up no I didn't that was correct okay four from stack 16 which means block group 16 yes and right on there and you know <clears throat> the reason these are matching up like as good as they are is because throughout <clears throat> I have maintained a consistent quarter inch seam through all of my blocks which means they will be perfectly square because of that. <clears throat> so when you pre-cut all of your strips to an exact length, for, especially for a log cabin, you will end up with a very square block simply because all the pieces are cut to the exact same size. And on log cabin, <clears throat> you will know if your seam is off because the pieces will, some of the logs will start to be either too short or too long. If that is happening, you need to check your seam allowance because you should never have to trim or ease in fabric when you use this method. Okay, one more round of blocks, one more blocks, one more set of strip of strips, and round three will be complete for our last 16 blocks on this quilt top. <clears throat> Which is totally cool. Totally cool. Okay. So, these will be the last four of those. And then guess what? After this next round right here, I'll just have round four. These blocks will be 75% complete. 
That's a good thing. is the last of round three for block group number 13. <coughs> Excuse me. So we are working finish these are our last set of strip pieces to finish round three on our block groups 13 14 15 and 16. Last four strips for group 15. <clears throat> for round three. Thank you. 
Woohoo! There's the last strip for round three on group 15. These last four pieces here from group 16, this will complete round three once I get these four strips sewn on. pieces. Here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the last piece for round three, groups 13, 14, 15, and 16. left are these pieces right here. Onward, now we're going to start with our last set of strips. This is round four. This is all that is left to finish our last 16 blocks for our lacy log cabin quilt top. Woohoo! Two, three, four of these. Okay, here we go. Let's get this one started. And this is block group number 13 here, getting started on round four. Thank you. 
Hi Vanessa, how do you do? How are you this evening? Then four of these. This is group 14 here. One, two, three, four. Woohoo. So this is <clears throat> The beginning of round four for block group 14. And it's the last round for all of our blocks for the Lacey Log Cabin Quilt Top. Woohoo! Episode 6, the final episode for this quilt top. Tomorrow, beginning at noon. And these are always recorded, so you can come back. If you can't make it while it's live, you can come back and watch the recording of it. Easy peasy. But yeah, tomorrow is all about setting all of these blocks together to finish our quilt top. Yes, so Vanessa, this is actually the Solaris with the embroidery arm off of it. Yeah. I mean, this could totally be done. What I'm doing now can be done on any machine. It just happens to be the machine I have on my sewing table right now. <clears throat> okay. Four from group 15 is next. Okay. Group 15. This is round four, the beginning of round four for group 15. that strip. Yeah, it looks completely different, Vanessa, with the embroidery arm off of it, doesn't it? <clears throat> okay. Four from group 16. And our first set of strips will be sewn on for round four. You know, it's funny how your brain works, because right now mine is in countdown mode 
to have all of these blocks done. <laughs> okay, we are stitching down. <clears throat> First set of strips on round four for block group 16 of round four, the final round. The final round. Yeah, we'll get those all cut apart. Well, thank you, Vanessa. I used 20 different fabrics on this quilt top, basically. <laughs> In the book, I think it called for 17 different fabrics. I added a few more because I was doing something a little, I didn't use the quilt fabric as in the book. <clears throat> and I changed the size of my strips. I made the strips a little bit wider than what the book called for, simply because it'd be easier for me to cut. The book called to the strips to be cut at one and a quarter inch strips. I cut mine at one and a half, so it made my blocks two inches larger all the way around. And that's not why I did it, it's just easier for me to hit an inch and a half on a ruler than it is one and a quarter. <clears throat> Thank you for asking, Vanessa. Right now I'm getting quite a bit of floaters, little spots, but I go in for my first um, post-op checkup on Monday. It's definitely doing better than it was before the surgery. Surgery, it will take some time for it to heal is what they told me. So for now, all is good. Although they did say I will probably have to have another surgery on down the road a little bit. So it's all good. There we go. This is the long, tonight is the longest I have sewn in over two weeks. And I have quilted two quilts this in the past seven days for here at the, here in my studio. My long arm, oops, 
More bobbin thread. That one's almost empty. Woohoo. Well, I'm cleaning out some bobbins tonight, everybody. It's a good thing. Okay, you can go up there. Let's see here. Use that one up next. Oops, come here, you. Don't go on the floor. There we go. Okay. Can also tell after I finish this quilt top, I gotta take my needle plate off and do a lint cleaning. <laughs> Yes, I do. Okay. Let's keep on keeping on. Yoopy doopy doo. Moving right along. Okay. Yes, everybody, this pull top has 1,088 pieces of fabric in this quilt top that I'm making. Absolutely, Vanessa. <laughs> yes, this is part of this, what I've went through with my eye, I've been told is just part of getting older. So there you go. <laughs> okay. It's all good. Working on round four on group block group number 14. That's where we're at. Let's see, now for blah, 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 these four from block group 15 is next. Blocky group of 15. Right there. Group 15, round four is what we're working on. Yeah. 
go. from this one here for four strips from group 16 and once I get these on round four will be 50% completed Woohoo! let's see here right there right there is where you go Just keep on keeping on working on block group 16 round four right now keeping on keeping on This strip sewn down, round four is 50% completed for our last set of locks for this quilt top. Oh my goodness. So exciting. Let's get those cut apart. very careful to exactly line these up in the exact same direction <clears throat> as they have been pieced and in the same order that way it makes it just a nice smooth transition right down all those piles of strips to keep everything in order easy peasy like they should be Woohoo! And actually, these 16 blocks would actually represent 25% of the quilt top. Okay. Now we will move forward. Four strips from this stack of, from group 13. There we go. Okay. This is working on the third group of pieces for round four. 
And we're working on group 13, it's four blocks right now. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> If you're working on just one block at a time, the, ex the extremes I'm going through on how I do everything isn't as important. But when you're working on multiples of many blocks at a time, you really need to be organized to keep all of your pieces in order. Because everybody knows I don't like having to rip out stitches. Vanessa, this quilt will be around 90 by 90 inches. We'll give it a measure tomorrow when I complete it. <clears throat> okay, more bobbin thread. <laughs> and we'll give it a, a good measure, but it'll be approximately 90 by 90, I think. Let me see here, right in here. <clears throat> okay. Let's get you back in line, get you restarted. There we go. And now four from here. Two, three, four. This is round three for group 14 that we just took off of. Not round, this is round four. This is, anyway, we are working on round four on group, uh, block group number 14 right now. If you wanted a larger quilt, you can always add more blocks or you can add a border to a, a log cabin quilt. This would, at 90 by 90, this would definitely be large enough for a queen size quilt. actually got a new um, 
Mike ordered us a new electric mattress pad that was delivered today. We're going to try that out tonight. I tell you, I've had a couple of back surgeries, and boy, howdy, they really do wonders if you have a bad back. Okay, so here's four strips from group 15. Block group 15, that's next. Working on round number four, the final round for block groups 13, 14, 15, and 16. I'm actually piecing on 16 quilt blocks, chain piecing. Episode 6 for this quilt top, the last episode when we're going to finish this quilt top tomorrow. Obviously, tomorrow is all about setting all the blocks together and finishing the quilt top. from group 16 woohoo almost have round three complete this is round four come here you four more two more pieces there we go okay this here will be our last round of strips oh my gosh round four group 16 is what we're doing right now Group 16, a third set of pieces for round four. I'm actually going to be in countdown mode here when I start this last round. These 16 pieces of fabric my hands are on, that's the last pieces in this quilt top to set to sew together 1,000 
and 88 pieces of that. Woohoo! And now we are going to cut our blocks apart and and so the final set of strips onto our blocks. Oh my gosh, that's so wonderful and exciting to know that. <laughs> I feel like I've been working on this one for a while. <laughs> and actually 16 blocks <clears throat> like I'm doing here that's approximately well, approximately three hours or two hours and 45 minutes to three hours for 16 blocks. Not bad. And if you actually did this, you made 16 blocks a day, you could have all your blocks pieced in four days without wearing yourself out. <clears throat> okay. Here we go, our last 16 pieces of fabric for this for the blocks. Alrighty, here we go. This will put all the strips for group th 13, all the blocks in group 13 are almost done here in two more pieces of fabric past this one. This strip will finish all of group the blocks in group 13 right there of course it wants another bobbin <laughs> that's all good we're almost there I have emptied up a bunch of partially filled bobbins tonight. That is a good thing. See something. There we go. That just wasn't spinning like it should have been. There we go. Okay. Let's get you restarted. Okay. Where was I at there? That was that was the end of group thirteen. So next is group fourteen, right here. These four strips will finish off group 14.
go. This strip will finish off all of group 14 blocks. Group 15. I'll take my little number tags off. <laughs> okay. Group 15 will be finished next. Yeah, yes, Vanessa and and Tracy, it will be nice to see them finally all set together. They can become one. Be one tomorrow. They'll be united as one, one big happy family. get fabric ordered for the blue and white quilt that will be our official October quilt. And I'm buying bolts of that so if anybody wants to use the same fabric that I make in one you will be able to do so in the future. Everybody, here it is. Here's the moment. The last four pieces of fabric out of 1,088 pieces of fabric. Here are the last four. Oh my gosh. So exciting. So awesome. more pieces of fabric. <laughs> yes, I'm going to count them down. Three more pieces of fabric, everybody. Remember, tomorrow at 12 noon Central Standard Time, we're going to sew all these blocks together and this quilt top will be complete. Once I finish these blocks here in just a moment, I'll swap cameras and we'll look at each one of these four, four groups of blocks that we have finished tonight, the four colorways.
How about that? One more time. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. Just builds the anticipation. Oh my gosh. Another st strip and a half of fabric. And it's complete. There we go. This will finish it off. This will finish it off. Okay. Here it is, the last piece. Woohoo! Woohoo, the last piece of fabric for the 64 quilt blocks. 1,088 pieces. And this is the very last one of those pieces. So this is actually piece number 1088 for this quilt top. And there it is. Use my cutter get the pieces separated. So that's 16. Seeing that they're all done. So exciting. Such a feeling of accomplishment. Holy Toledo. Now then, I am going to swap my camera. Let's see here. Right there. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this would be from group 13 right here is this one here, group 13. Okay. That was group 13. Group 14, this is what we've made tonight. Group 14 right there. Group 15, right here. Group 15. And last but not least, right here is group 16. Right there, group 16 block group 16 for a total of 64 quilt blocks 1088 pieces of cut fabric in these in what I have in my hands woohoo how exciting is that oh my gosh everybody thank you so much for tuning in tomorrow at noon central standard time that chicago st louis Nashville, Paducah, Memphis, New Orleans, Central Time Zone, 12 noon. I'm gonna set all these quilt blocks together and finish them, and it will be on live online until it is done tomorrow. Tomorrow, episode six, Lacey Log Cabin in our Quilts in Italy series. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Woohoo!